All right, after about a year and a half, um, finally getting around to making a video of my prototype uh, for my electronic, uh, automatic electronic dog feeder uh, for large dogs. A lot of people pointed out to me that these already existed, uh, which I was aware of, but most of the dog feeders already in existence are for small dogs. They hold a small amount of food in their hopper and they dispense a small amount of food for small dogs. Uh, and very few of them can be automated. Uh, I had a Pitbull chocolate lab mix who ate four cups of food in one sitting. Uh, and ideally I wanted a hopper that would hold an entire 35 pound bag of food uh, and be fully automated if I wanted it to be. Uh, and again, to dispense a full serving of food uh, for my dog. So I built this. Uh, this is the part of the dog feeder that's in my garage. It's the ho hopper, the motor, and all the electronics. And then it, it uh, feeds the food through the wall and dispenses it on the other side in my kitchen, which is where my dog bowl is. Uh, so I'll just go through each part of the, of the feeder now. Um, the main part is the hopper. Uh, you can open the top here and then open this top half. Uh, you fill the hopper uh, halfway uh, and then you can close the top half and then fill it the rest of the way. That way you don't have to lift the entire bag of food up to fill in from the top. Uh, there's a little window there to see when it's low. Um, at the bottom you can see I've got a, a four inch PVC pipe that goes through the wall. Inside that PVC pipe is an auger bit. Uh, and then I've got a mount on the bottom for my motor and pulley, uh, which I'll show a little more here in a moment. Um, but starting up here, you can see my jankity wiring job that comes into uh, actually the switch there on the bottom and then goes to that outlet. Uh, the outlet is where the power supply plugs in. I've just got a little shuttle PC power supply, which these things are awesome for electronics. I've got 12 volts, 5 volts, 3 volts, whatever I need for whatever project I'm doing. Uh, and this served me well to power both the motor driver and the, uh, the DigiSpark as well. That's what's uh, running this whole thing is the little DigiSpark there, which is an Arduino compatible uh, controller. Uh, that feeds into my motor driver. Uh, it's a 3540M. Uh, it's technically a little overkill for this for this uh, project. I originally built this with a big easy driver from SparkFun. Uh, the problem with that is to power the motor with enough power to avoid um, food getting caught in the in the auger bit. Uh, I had to have the voltage cranked all the way up on that big easy. Uh, it would get hot. Uh, it just caused me some problems. Uh, with a little more tinkering, you could probably make this project work with the big easy, which. Would certainly save a lot of money, but I had the 3540 available to me, uh, so that's what I used to uh, to drive the stepper motor. Um, that feeds down here to the stepper motor itself, uh, and then that runs my my pulley. Now, what I've got here is I've got this little wood block that goes around the PVC pipe, and I just have it uh, liquid nailed on there. And that serves to mount this block, which uh, I can mount my motor to. Um, and then the auger bit itself, the shaft for the auger bit comes through. Now what I have actually holding the shaft there is a, uh, a square of Delrin, uh, which is, it's like a really hard plastic material and it's self lubricating. Uh, so it's much more uh, maintenance free uh, and just much more convenient to use than like a ball bearing system. Uh, and it also works much better in, in uh, humid clients. It's very humid where I live, so the Delrin is just a better solution than like ball bearings. Uh, and it'll be a lot more, a lot longer lasting. So there's actually a block of Delrin in there uh, that the shaft is riding on uh, that then the pulley is connected to. Uh, turn it on with the, uh, with the switch there. Uh, alternatively, with the power of Z-Wave and Tasker, I can uh, I can just hit this button here on my phone, and then it kicks on. So the DigiSpark takes five seconds before it actually starts running any code, and then the uh, the motor goes. Now you'll see it goes forward a bit, and then back, forward, back, forward, back. I found that was best uh, 
to avoid food getting caught down in the uh, in the auger bit. So if any food starts getting wedged, it backs off, then goes, then backs off, then goes. Um, my very first, uh, the very first code I wrote for this didn't have it back up at all, and sometimes food would get caught, and then it'd have to crunch through, and it just wasn't as smooth going. So now it operates a little bit smoother. Uh, and then with my Z-Wave controller, uh, which is a Vera 3 or Tasker, I can automate this as well. So I can either run it manually from my phone or the switch, uh, or I could set it up to run you know, every morning at a certain time for X number of seconds, whatever gives me the, the, food, the amount of food that I want. Uh, so now I'll go inside here and we'll see uh, where it comes out into the house. Uh, so here it is on this side of the wall. Basically the PVC pipe comes through the wall. There's a hole in the bottom of it and then the food just drops out of that and then I built that little outlet cover so it looks a little nicer and you know no one's little fingers can get the kids fingers can't get caught up in there and then uh, it's got the little exit ramp there for the food to come out and I'll turn it on again and Again, it takes about five seconds for the DigiSpark to start actually running code and then the food comes out. Usually I have the bowl uh, elevated higher so it doesn't, doesn't uh, make a mess by splashing out, but that's how that works. Uh, been working on this project for a while. Like I said, I actually finished it about a year and a half ago and just got around to videoing it. Um, some other improvements I could make to it are mainly aesthetic, you know, I could finish off the electronics a little better, uh, paint and cover uh, the motor and, and the pulley in those areas so nothing can interfere with that. Um, but yeah, that's my automatic electronic dog feeder.